Over the next 48 hours, we have to drive more than 550 miles. We're Lauren and Daniel. We live and work full time in our Airstream Classic. Right now, we are headed to our very first Airstream rally with over 800 other Airstreamers to camp for a week in Lebanon, Tennessee. Daniel's gonna drive part of it and I'm gonna drive the other part. And as we do, we're gonna give you all of the tips that he's giving me as to how to tow the Airstream in a safe and efficient manner. Should be fun. But before we do, the very first thing that you wanna know is a brand new heat when towing your RV is that you wanna pick a smart time to do it. Like you can see behind me, there's a storm coming. And to get to where we're going, we have to go through the city of Denver. Not ideal conditions for a first time driver. So Daniel is gonna take the first leg and we're gonna stop at a gas station so that I can take it once the roads are a little more chill. All right, camera's mounted and ready. Time to hit the road. States and 20,000 miles. I'm just going to kind of walk you through some of the things that I've learned while traveling over the last 10 months. One thing I always, always, always do before pulling out of a campground is I always make sure that I have one, a full tank, always, because it's a lot easier to fill up your tank when you don't have anything that you're towing behind you. I mean, that in itself is just a huge, huge tip. Two, I make sure that all of my mirrors are properly set before I ever pull out of a campground. I wanna make sure that I can see the sides of the Airstream, the lanes, I've got my backup camera that I use while I'm driving. That tells me if somebody is tailgating me, I'm not saying it happens, but occasionally it does. I also make sure that I check all my tire pressures. Um, that's very, very, very important because the last thing you want is a blowout while you're driving down the highway. Most people talk about checking the tire pressures of the Airstream or the RV, but don't forget, you have to check the tire pressures of your truck or your tow vehicle as well. That's just as important. Another very important thing, especially when you're hooking up your campground, is to make sure that you have that checklist and you never deviate from your checklist. You wanna make sure you're doing everything the exact same way every single time. It doesn't matter whether it's the fourth time or the 40th. Make sure you do everything exactly the same. And once you're done doing that, check it again. There's nothing wrong with double and triple checking all of your work, always. Because the last thing you want is to forget something on your checklist while you're driving down the highway, like a hitch pin or something crazy like that. So just make sure you're obsessive about going through your checklist. Now that our little switcheroo is complete, it's time for me to take over. So step one, like any time you're driving, you want to make sure that you set up your seat. I'm shorter than Daniel, so I'm gonna push it forward and I like it a little bit straighter than he does. So all set. Then because Daniel's already been driving, I know our truck is on tow mode, but that's something that I wouldn't have known as a newbie before. So with our Ford F-250, you literally just click this little button for drive mode and you can confirm that it's on tow. As a towing newbie, the thing that I think is the most difficult to get used to is the fact that your rear view mirror is basically irrelevant. Because, well, when you look in the rear view mirror, all you're gonna see is your RV. What that does mean is that all of a sudden, your side view mirrors become way more important. So in our truck, we've got a top mirror and a bottom mirror. The bottom mirror is basically my new best friend because it can show me a lot more of what's going on behind me. So I'm constantly watching that. The top mirror, I have it positioned so that I can just see a tiny side of the Airstream. And that's what I can see when someone's actually closer to me. But getting used to that and getting comfortable with it is definitely a challenge as a newbie. This goes back to my earlier point of making sure that you correct all of your mirrors before you pull out of the campground because it's a lot more difficult to adjust your mirrors while you're driving on the highway. So do them before you leave the campground. It's a lot easier. Don't be afraid to take it slow. Stay in the slow lane. 
there's nothing wrong with that and there's a reason that all the big trucks do it. Only goes faster you're comfortable with. Even though our tires are rated at maybe 70, 75 miles an hour, if you only feel comfortable going 50 miles an hour, then only drive 50. Some people also just like to go slower because it increases your gas mileage. The slower you go, the more you get out of a gallon. If towing your RV were a video game and that video game was Mario Kart, city driving would basically be like Rainbow Bridge. So don't take that as your first time towing. Find a place to practice that has wide open roads so that you can get used to the way the RV moves behind you when you make turns and when there are bumps on the road. That's how Daniel taught me and so far, so good. Think of making turns the way you would think of a verbose signature. Huge, swooping, cursive. That's essentially what you should think of when you're towing an RV. You wanna use up as much real estate as possible so that you can safely make the turn. If you're anything like me, even when I'm not towing, a semi-truck can be a little intimidating. But what I've learned since we've started this RV life adventure is that semi-trucks are basically your best friend when you're towing because they know a thing or two about driving with a big rig. So you can pretty much just follow their lead and do a better job towing. For example, one of the things that you'll see semi-trucks do regularly is hug the outside of a lane. And the reason they're doing that is because they're giving the other drivers in the other lane plenty of extra room to get past them. Getting used to doing the same thing when you're towing your RV is just a good practice. Another really good practice that I've learned from following a lot of the truckers on the road, whenever they see somebody pulled off to the side of the road, whether they're fixing a tire or it's police or the like, they always change lanes to give them adequate space. You should do the exact same thing. We've made it a habit and just imagine you being on the side of the road trying to fix a tire. You'd want all the other drivers to extend that same courtesy to you. So make it a habit to change lanes whenever you see somebody pulled off to the side of the road. Always. Another really cool thing we learned at last campground from a truck driver is to be cognizant of what the truckers are doing. If you see four truckers getting off on a highway and you're experiencing some winds, it's probably a good sign that you should be getting off as well. Because they have their own method of communications, it's probably best to follow suit with whatever a bunch of the truckers are doing. So if you see four more truckers doing something, it's probably a good idea to follow suit. In the US, we drive on the right side of the road, which means when you're going from the right lane and making a right turn, it's always going to be the sharpest. And the reason that matters is that, well, you're towing a lot of stuff behind you. So if you make a sharp turn, you're gonna tag out everything in the corner and you definitely don't wanna do that. If you're in the left lane and you're making a left turn, you have a lot more room to play with. Our friends Sam and Heidi taught us this. They drive a class A, they had a crazy story about going down a mountain that didn't go so well. And after the experience, Heidi Googled it. And one of the things that's important to know when you're towing is that when you're going down a hill, you don't want to press down on the brake continuously because they can get too hot. So what you want to do instead is you want to press the brake at intervals. So press it a little bit, then bring it back up press it a little bit, then bring it back up so that you don't overheat your brakes. See, back in the 90s, my friends and I were burning up the roads fast and furious style. And we were all riding around with very low vehicles. And I mean, like our vehicles are like two to three inches off of the ground. So one of the things that we always did was we would look way ahead and we would search the road for any sort of abnormalities because let's face it, with a low rider car, if there's some abnormalities in the road, you're going to scrape, and that means repairs that you typically can't afford because we were all a bunch of college kids. That same rule applies to towing, because let's just face it, roads in the US, some are great, and some super suck. And if you're not careful when you're towing, you can find yourself feeling like you just launched off of a ramp. And what that does is it makes your RV bounce a lot. So what I try to do is I try to look far ahead for any inconsistencies in the pavement. See, what you'll typically look for are dark spots where you may have some oil leaks or you'll see scrapes where maybe some 
older Fast and Furious fans like myself would have scraped the road and caused like little divots in the, uh, in the asphalt. All right, and it's also a really good tip to take breaks because, wow, it's a long time to be in a car. And if you're going for long distances, get out, stretch your legs, enjoy some of that beautiful sunshine before you jump back in the car and continue your journey. You don't have to do those exact things, but get out and stretch your legs every now and then. It's good for the soul, just kind of like wandering. Wander local, good for the soul. Stretching, good for your drive. Nothing wrong with the switcheroo. Thankfully, we're only about an hour and a half away from where we're stopping for the night. Hayes, Kansas. Here's a really solid tip when you're driving through construction, like this, and it gets a little snuggy snug. Sometimes they'll put the cones like right on the lines and you're thinking how in the heck do I stay in the lane? Don't. Just use what available concrete or asphalt you have to work with and just stay dead center. Don't worry about the lanes. Do the best you can. Made it to Hayes and is a newbie. Strongly suggest bringing someone along who can back into a campsite or get a pull through. Tonight we had a back in, so Daniel took care of it. I'm gonna start working on this soon, but for now we made it. How was that back in job, Boo? That was not my best work, but it'll do. Good morning, Hayes, Kansas. We're not in Colorado anymore. We're about to hit the road again, heading off to Wichita, Kansas, and we're gonna share more tips along the way. It's good practice for all RVers, but it's especially important for new RVers to always check the lights before you pull out of a campground. So Lauren, with the help of our handy dandy walkie talkies, is gonna go through that process with you right now. Testing one, two. Check, 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 check. All right, ready to check the lights. Passenger side is working. Driver's side is working. Flashers are working. And reverse is working. We are good to go, sir. Before I head out into the road, I always, always, always check the route. And there's lots of different apps to help you with that, but what I'm looking for are not the long stretches of highway, they're gonna be easy. It's all of the offshoots. And sometimes the optimal route isn't always the shortest route. So always keep that in mind. Sometimes you have to go a little bit longer on a straight path to have a safer journey. And that's very, very important when you're towing any sort of large airstream. That's especially important when you're towing really any RV of any size. You wanna be very cognizant of all of the roadways and paths to get to your destination. The places where you encounter the most turns are typically at the beginning and end of your journey. So in this instance, you can tell that our Wichita campground is right off of 135 which should make it very easy to get in and out of. Now that I've checked our route to make sure there's nothing crazy along the way, it's time to roll out. Okay. Okay, so legitimately, for the first time in over 20,000 miles, we had a semi-truck in front of us with a tire blowout, and there were tire pieces all over the road, and there was nowhere for me to go. I mean, it was covering both lanes, so I just tried to center some of the larger pieces so that it didn't go underneath the tires, but, um, Hopefully there's no damage. I'm pulling off right here. That's my advice to you. If you have something like that, I mean, it sounded like an explosion underneath the truck. Um, I'm finding the first exit I can, which in this case happens to be a rest area, and I'm gonna make sure that there's no damage. One of the things I immediately did when I heard the noise was I checked my tire pressures on both the truck and the Airstream, which again is a very important reason why you should have tire monitoring systems for both the truck and the Airstream. So I'm starting with taking out the front of the truck. It doesn't look like there's any damage, but the tire definitely hit that portion of it because it sounded like a big explosion. Okay, it, I can see that there's a shield around the catalytic converter and it looks like it just kind of slightly dented that, but beyond that, everything else looks okay. I was mostly worried about the truck chewing up some of the tire pieces and spitting it back out into the airstream. So far, so good. I was really concerned about this piece right here, the cover for the propane tanks. 
Now I'm gonna take a look underneath. Oh man, go for the bird, go for the bird. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Might as well get a workout in while I'm checking out the Airstream. I can tell where it gave one of my tanks a little ding, but it doesn't seem like it's that major of a deal. So all in all, everything is A-OK -okay and we can continue on with the journey. But again, things could have gone wrong, which is why it's important to exit as quickly as possible and make sure you check all your tire pressures, make sure you check the undercarriage for any potential damage. And like I said before, it doesn't matter why we're stopping, we're stopping. So it's always good to get in some stretches and exercise while you're doing it because it helps to break up some of those long drives, keeps those joints nice and loose. Back on the road. This is what I'm typically doing when we're traveling, working. <laughs> we just arrived to our campground here in Wichita. We're staring at Air Capital RV. And one of the things I would highly suggest as a brand newbie to towing is to request a pull through spot. We didn't actually do that this time. We just got lucky and that was what our reservation was for. But this will make it easier for you when you're getting to your campground. That being said, even with a pull through spot, there are specific things that you want to take a look at and make sure that you have set up so that your camping experience is awesome. Now what I'm doing is I'm gonna jump out and see where all the hookups are because even though the cords and hoses are long, you don't really want to stretch them out to their full length. So getting as close as you can to the hookup spots is definitely recommended. And before I get everything into position, the first thing I'm gonna do is to check the power. I'm gonna make sure the 50 amp breaker is off. Now I'm gonna go grab my surge protector. What I'm basically doing with the surge protector is I'm checking for any errors. And that could be a grounding error or something similar to that. If the power is no good, then you're gonna to have to move campgrounds. So it's always important to test, to test the power before you start breaking down. You really don't wanna run 20 feet of sewer hose if you don't have to. I'm gonna pull forward to shorten the distance between the sewer connection and where my sewer hose comes out of the RV. Okay, now I've got everything in position, it's time to disconnect. And because we're on a concrete platform that looks relatively level, I'm not gonna worry about getting the Anderson levelers out and leveling it. For the most part, concrete platforms are level. So rest assured, even if you're only off by like a degree or so, it's not that big a deal. pretty much ready to call this one a wrap. But the last thing I would say from a standpoint of one newbie to another, don't wait to start learning how to tow your RV. I was one that waited almost 10 months to get started and we even had a scenario once where Daniel got sick and we were supposed to go to another campground and we had to stay longer. You don't want to get stuck. Is towing your RV as a newbie intimidating? Absolutely. But if I can do it, you can do it. You just gotta get started and find the time to practice. If you have a tip specifically for newbies, make sure you put it in the comments below because this video is definitely not an extensive list. These are just the things that have helped me learn and wanted to pass them along. Until the next video, friend, make sure you wander local this week. It's good for the soul.